Hello and welcome to this second section. In this section, we will be learning about the verification concepts or the basic concepts in uh, verification. So, we will start with understanding what is verification. So, verification is defined as a process of demonstrating functional correctness of a design. So, it is a way in which you can make sure that a design implemented uh, is functionally correct with respect to the design specifications. Now, this diagram illustrates this process. So, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, every design starts with capturing the design specifications. So, this design specification is then interpreted by a set of people who translate this specification into a design entry, typically using an HTL or a hardware description language like say Verilog or System Verilog. And then they translate the specification into say a design reference model. And this whole process is known as RTL coding. Now, on the same side, there will be the same specification is interpreted by another set of people and then their job is to make sure that what is the design, uh, design entry captured using the RTL coding process is functionally equivalent to the specification as interpreted by them and this process is known as uh, the verification. So, we will see more exactly as to how this is done in the following lectures. Now, let us see what happens if we do not verify or let us understand like why verification is important. Uh, so, is it possible to really guarantee a design without verification? So, since the design is translated using, uh, using an STL into a design model, if the specifications are incorrect or insufficient, the design uh, will be implemented wrongly. The design specification could also be misinterpreted by the designers or there can also be misunderstanding between different design engineers in interpreting the specification. Uh, there can be incorrect interaction between IPs and cores especially if the design involves multiple IPs and multiple core blocks and if these, de these designs are done by say different individuals with each of them may be interpreting the specification differently then there could be issues when all of these IPs and cores starts interacting together and eventually all of these can lead to unexpected behaviors of the system. So, if you do not have a process of verification and if it is only a set of uh, process in which the specification is translated into design then because of all of these issues you will end up having an unexpected system design. And that is why it is kind of important to uh, verify the whole design process to make sure that the uh, implemented design is functionally correct with respect to specification. It is also important to understand that any bug that escapes this design process all the way into the silicon can be very costly and can also result in a respin of the same chip. Unlike a software which can be uh, patched for any bugs even after protectization, any bugs that can escape to an actual silicon in the chip design can be very costly. Uh, so, that is why it is also important to understand the uh, importance of verification in the overall chip design process. And based on this, there are certain data collected by some of the uh, analysts in the semiconductor industry which shows that about 70 percent of every project's design uh, cycles is actually spent in verifying the design. And this is very important especially in the ever increasing complexity of design def designs where it is kind of very harder to make sure that the design is functionally correct with respect to all the specifications before the actual uh, silicon is made. So, it also shows that in every design project verification is always on the critical path for the product design. So, yeah this diagram just shows some of the data from the industry which shows that in the overall system design uh, process the actual dis system design takes about 10 percent time and the implementation takes 20 percent and the most of the other time about 70 percent of the overall uh, design life cycle is actually spending verifying to make sure that the actual design meets the specifications before we do a tape out. So, the next question that we will try to understand is to what really to be verified also known as the verification space. So, there are three aspects to the verification space which is functional verification, timing verification and performance verification. 
So the first one, functional verification, is a process which focuses more on making sure that the functionality of the design is verified. So this can include making sure that what are the design protocols implemented, what are the features that are supported by that specific design, etc., are verified as per the specification. The second one is timing verification. So this focuses more on making sure that the actual timing of the design implemented meets the specifications of the design. Some examples could be making sure that, say, what is the maximum frequency which, at which the design is supposed to behave. Uh, we make sure that really the design implemented does meets those maximum frequencies timings. And the third aspect is performance verification. Performance verification is a process in which we focuses, focus more on the actual performance goals of the design. Some examples could be again, say if the design is a microprocessor or a microprocessor which states that the design has to yeah, execute say n number of instructions every clock cycle, then making sure that the real design implemented is capable of executing say so many n number of instructions falls under the performance verification. Some other examples could be if the design has a memory read or write path to certain memory. And if say the design has a goal of making sure that it is able, capable of doing a read or a write to the memory every cycle, then making sure that the real design implemented is capable of doing that memory read writes every cycle falls under performance verification. So the next question is uh, how to verify or what are the different approaches that can be used for verifying a design. So the first one is simulation based verification which is still the most commonly used or uh, the approach that is used to get most of the design verification done. And we will learn about these in the following sections but just to list down the other approaches are emulation or FPGA based verification formal verification and semi-formal verification and hardware software co-verification. So we will learn about most of these approaches in the following lecture. So with that I will conclude this lecture and we will see more about this in the next lecture. Thank you.